Oncology TV coverage here at ASCO 2015. Thomas Baldrick joined now by Dr. Patrick Bowen from the Roswell Park Cancer Institute. Thank you for coming by, sir. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Let's talk about this uh, comprehensive multi-platform biomarker analysis of 212 anal squamous cell carcinomas. Before we get into the study itself, what are the uh, unique challenges you have in dealing with these patients? Right, so the, the tricky thing with anal cancer is it's a, it's, a very rare, it's a very rare cancer and most of the time it's picked up early so that metastatic and refractory patients are even rarer. So you're talking about a rare subset of a rare disease. So one of the difficulties is because of, because of that, we really don't have great data even on standard treatment options, how effective they are. Um, as we're trying to guide patients through this and, and figure out how to best treat them. Okay, so, you're, so your hands are kind of tied. Is that, what, is that what leads you to use a multi-technology approach? Yeah, that's, that's part of it. I think the, you know, the, the beauty of a multi-technology approach as opposed to just the sequencing, I think we see other types of alterations. So I, I think we get a better assessment of things like um, amplification, um, and 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 protein expression, which you know, which may be important for some of these. So, what were you hoping to identify? To identify targets, really, that could help guide uh, future studies, and and also to look at um, the efficacy and you know how we select currently available treatments, which which are limited. So, what are key takeaways you have from this? What we saw globally looking at this, um, the biggest thing we saw was there's PI3 kinase mutations in about a quarter of patients and there's alterations in this pathway in, in over half of patients. Um, so that's interesting, that's something that's potentially druggable, it's potentially targetable and, and maybe a way to go with this sort of uh, a therapy. We also saw EGFR amplifications in about a little under 8% of patients. So there's a tiny bit of data on using you know, currently available uh, targeted therapies EGFR targeted therapy, so that may be a subset of that group who, you know, drives more benefit. Are there any new treatment options that come out of what you have been able to obtain? So one of the interesting things that that w was presented uh, just a little bit ago today is um, from e Eli Lilly has a drug uh, that's it's a checkpoint inhibitor. It's not the one of the immune checkpoint inhibitors that everybody's been talking about. It's it's more involved in cell cycle and DNA damage control. But um, regardless, they, they they actually did a study, and I have to commend them on that, in uh, anal cancers, and they're seeing uh, favorable responses in that disease. This is a disease where we really don't have much, and predominant, it looks like there may be a little bit of a signal that PA3 kinase alterations may uh, preferentially identify those patients, but it's, it's very early, um, too soon to, you know, call that with any confidence. Overall, the, the value or importance of molecular profiling in dealing with a disease like ASCC? When you have a rare disease and you have limited opportunities to you know, develop new treatments for it, we have to really think carefully about how, how we're going to proceed. Um, and so I think if we can be informed in some way, um, hopefully it will make the chances of that being more successful, you know, uh, to improve uh, the outcomes for our patients you know, more successfully as well. So part of the hope of all of this is that by identifying targets um, that, that we get closer to that. Thank you for sharing your news. It, it's, it's important to get news of the rare cancers out there as well. We mm -hmm. appreciate it. Agree. Okay. You're welcome.